So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Jordan Pittman. I am the Digital Equity Coordinator for the Institute for Local Self-Reliance. And again, as mentioned before, I appreciate you guys taking time out of your day to come to this webinar today where we'll be discussing how your voice matters, which is a complete guide to preparing for public comment. So today, again, we're gonna do welcome introductions. I'm gonna give a good level setting field of what public comment is, how you comment, questions regarding that. And then we'll start talking about purpose and outcomes and process when it comes to public comment. And then we'll snip in little things about tips for effective comment. Some of the toolkits that actually the Broadman Development Office has provided for you all to use to help drive public comment as well as what comes after. So we'll go over these couple topics and then we'll go into breakout sessions like we did last webinar. And we'll kind of get into a discussion on what ways that we can drive public comment for us in relatively in urban or rural areas. We'll split it between the two. So before we get started, I just want to say, again, my name is Jordan Pittman. Uh, just a little background about me. I grew up in South Georgia, so the South is my home. Um, and with that, from the interactions I've had with people growing up in my family, community has always been the biggest thing to me. I've even gotten my degree in community development. So when it comes to it, I've always been taught that with anything in life, it takes a team, it takes a village to accomplish things. And we are lucky that we have this once in a lifetime opportunity to provide these skills and resources and devices and everything we need for digital literacy and skills for people in Texas. So even though I'm not from Texas, I feel like I'm connected to TRA just from a South purpose. But with that, I think we have a unique opportunity both in this space today and moving forward on collectively coming together to make sure the plan is for best it is possible for Texans, because that's what we want ultimately at the end. It's for everybody to have all the resources needed so everybody can have better lives and futures regarding digital equity. So going into it first, as mentioned, we're going to do a quick level setting when it comes to public comment. So what is public comment? As mentioned here, public comment is the opportunity for Texas residents to review and give their feedback on the Texas Digital Opportunity Plan. So the plan, and I'll show it later, there will be a QR code for you to scan it if you don't have the plan already. The plan is over 100 pages, but it's an opportunity for you to look through. And if there's anything that you wanna acknowledge or address that's maybe not addressed, or you just wanna highlight, this is an opportunity for you to provide feedback to that. Um, the Broadband Development Office has been quite open with understanding that the plan is a draft. So you, as my family used to say growing up, you only know what you know. So the more you know, the better, especially when you have more people involved. So this is the opportunity for everybody to speak their mind on this. And it is a requirement to receive the federal funding as well. So it is needed as well on the Broadman Development Office standpoint to connect Texans with reliable high-speed internet and digital resources. That's what they want to do. And this provides that process for them to ultimately be able to provide those resources for you. So how will the BDO, well, how, how will BDO use the comments? They will review every single comment and the comment will again help to refine the plan to expand digital opportunity and future funding strategies. So this is super important. This is, again, a once in a lifetime opportunity to provide this funding to you guys. And the comments will be reviewed. Every, every single comment will be reviewed and there's an opportunity for your voice to be heard. So who should comment? Again, all Texas residents and organizations can comment. Um, and in the video specifically is interested in hearing from individuals that are identifying with a covered population group or organization that serves these communities. So if you don't know, covered populations by definition is individuals who may have limited access to things such as reliable broadband internet, um, devices, um, resources that are needed for them to have the digital literacy or skills to navigate the internet. So we wanna address those and really reach out to those people and organizations who work with covered populations to make sure that their voices is heard and making sure that everything that they have is supplied there as well. And will the comments be anonymous? So the comments will not be anonymous. Your name and email address will be shared. And NTIA will also create a searchable national 
database of all public comments and is received as part of this process, both with the names and email addresses removed. So quick caveat, there might be some people in this in this uh, webinar right now that's like, well, I have people that maybe it will be a really great idea for that person to submit a public comment, but maybe they don't have internet or they might have something that's a barrier that's preventing them to actually submit that. Because as mentioned later on, uh, public comments can only be submitted through via the online form. So it's very important. I want to highlight that organizations and institutions that provide connect the like devices and resources should provide public notice that assistance is available to fill and file a public comment if somebody needs to um, do that, despite barriers that might be limiting them to do that. So before I continue, I just want to highlight that um, we as a team will be submitting a poll for you very shortly. And the poll will pop up randomly on your screen and it might be in the way, but I just wanna let you guys know that once you finish the poll, you can move it to your next window monitor, you can move it down. So we will be propping that poll so it looks shortly. So I just wanna give you that heads up before we continue. So nothing just randomly pops up on your screen. And there's the poll right there. So again, as mentioned, this is the QR code for you guys to scan you can scan it to allow you to download and review the draft plan. Um, and as well, we provide the website here on screen as well for you to look it up later on a later date, as well as looking at the NTIA's funding program directory as well. So I'll keep the QR, QR code on there for a few seconds, just to make sure everybody has it. And then I'll go to the next slide. So, now we have a good understanding of what public comment is, who can comment, the significance of it. I wanna talk about both the purpose, the outcomes, and the process that's associated with it. So I've been saying NTIA a lot. So for others who don't know who the NTIA is, excuse me, they are the National Telecommunications and Information Administration, which is a mouthful just to say that they were part of the federal government that's responsible to help drive these federal guidelines and understandings and process in order for this federal dollars to be distributed to each state. So with that, they have required each state, just like Texas, to hold public comment periods that allow both residents and organizations to give their feedback on the digital opportunity plan. So ultimately that is the purpose. Uh, it is required to have this because most importantly, like the plan can only serve as much as what you your residence of your state is. So why not receive public comment from the people that you actually um, interact with on a day-to-day -day basis? So that is the purpose when it comes to public comment. And then we're starting into the outcomes where this is where the real meat and potatoes of public comment comes in. So the Broadman Development Office really hopes and encourages that the public comment period will help refine and improve upon the plan. I uh, mentioned it before and I will mention again, the plan is a draft. So this is a great opportunity for anybody who can go to the plan and the public comment will allow you to suggest changes that you would like to see in the plan. It allows you to share where your organization could be helpful in implementation. It can provide additional information that the plan may not capture. It makes policy suggestions and it corrects the record if needed. And I wanna really emphasize this again because I, the Broadband Development Office has worked really hard for this document. Everybody who works a part of the office is dedicated to making sure that all the resources are allocated appropriately. But at the end of the day, they are human and we all have blind spots. So it's important to recognize that you guys have a voice to say that, hey, you know, I think this is great. There's a section here that I would just like to highlight. And maybe that wouldn't have been possible without your voice. So you have a unique opportunity to really make a difference for not just your community, but for Texas as a whole. So those are the outcomes that we're kind of looking for when we're submitting public comment. And so the process. So again, the public comment process is open to all Texans and the Broadman Development Office really encourages both residents, local governments, community-based organizations, and others to provide that feedback. And as mentioned before, the Broadman Development Office is especially interested in hearing from individuals and organizations that cover and represent covered populations. 
And I mentioned the definition of covered population before, but I just want to mention some of the examples of when I say covered populations. I'm talking about older adults, veterans, English language learners, individuals living with disabilities, uh, individuals who live in rural areas, uh, racial and ethnic minorities, uh, people that live at or below the federal poverty line, and incarcerated individuals as well. So I just wanted to let you guys know when I say covered populations, those are the people that I am highlighting there. So I have this video for y'all. It kind of goes through the process of how to submit a public comment. It's about two, two and a half minutes long. So I'm going to play that for you right now. Hey there, I'm Jordan Pittman and welcome to today's guide on submitting a public comment to the Texas Digital Opportunity Plan. In a world where connectivity is key, ensuring that every Texan has access is now more important than ever. Today, I'm gonna walk you through the simple steps to make your voice heard in shaping the TDOP. So let's dive in. We will begin by going to Google and typing in the Texas Broadband Development Office, or BDO. And we'll click on this first link here. And when we're on the main page, we're gonna scroll down to where it says what's new. And right here, it'll say the Texas Digital Opportunity Plan Public Comment. You will click on this link and it will take you to this page that will offer you both access to look at the plan, the executive summary, as well as other information as well, including showing the plan right here to the right, which you can always check back to for reference. Filling out a public comment form is easy. On the left-hand side, you'll see that it will ask you just a couple questions. The first being, are you filling out this public comment form as a resident or organization? Do you identify or provide services to any of the followed covered populations? Select all that applies. Then you will add your first, last name, and email. Then towards the end, it will ask you which chapter would you like to provide a comment on. So you will choose which chapter you would like to provide the comment on, and you will provide your comment in this text box here. There is an accessibility option to voice the text as well. And once that is completed, you can also provide any additional documents to support your claim by clicking this Choose File section here. Once you're completed with submitting your public claim, you will click right here to submit. Or if you like to comment on another section, this black text box right here will allow you to click on another chapter to provide more public comment. And you can click on this for as many chapters as you would like to comment on. Once you're completed, again, you'll just click the click to submit. And that'll be it. You have completed and submitted a public comment. Just as a reminder, the public comment period ends on January 5th. All right. So that is the process of submitting a public comment. So thank you for hearing me, hear me inside another video, inside a presentation. But this video is embedded into the presentation that we will share with you guys afterwards. Uh, if you ever want to go back and use that video as reference to submit that. So I just showed y'all the process on how to submit. And my first thought process, even when creating that video was, hmm, how do I make sure I create the most effective comment that is most suited for the situation that I'm trying to address? So luckily we have some tips for you that can really help drive a really effective comment. And one of those first ones is supporting your comments with sustain, uh, with sustain of, excuse me, data, facts, and opinions. Um, and when possible, provide your lived experience in your uh, comment as well. So as I showed in the video, there was a section for like additional documents. That is a great place for you to, after you put down your description of what your comment would be, you can put down that additional, uh, additional documents in that section as well to back up and support your comments with the facts and opinions and data that you have provided. And second point, it clearly mentioned that it asks to clearly identify the section which the plan that you're trying to comment on and include the section number as well. Luckily, 
in the process, you see that you can actually break down where you want to submit the comment by chapter. Uh, so you can go to specific chapter, the chapter that you're looking for, and you can clearly not only highlight the chapter that you're doing, but you can state inside your comment the section that you really want to highlight, including the number and the, even the page number as well. Uh, and although the comment should be clear and concise, there is no minimum or maximum length for effective comment. So you, I, I'm pretty wordy myself, so I just, I'm really long-winded, so I write a lot. So don't feel bad for long-winded people out there. You can write as much as you need. Um, so those are two things. As well as if you disagree with an aspect of the plan, um, this is a great opportunity for you to do that with the public comment. You know, just suggest alternative when you come to that comment, when you type it, and as well as include an explanation and or analysis of how that alternative might need or might meet the same objective or be more effective. So again, the, the, the plan is a draft. So I think it's critical that if there's something in there that you disagree with, that you can not only bring the alternative to, but also show how the alternative can still meet the same objective. Because at the end of the day, we all just want these resources to be allocated appropriately and properly for everybody. So disagreement can be a great thing and making sure that we move the conversation forward and making sure everybody gets what they need. So don't be afraid if you disagree um, to not comment, please do, we, we welcome that. And include pros and cons and trade-offs in your comments. So consider other points of view and response to them with your own views and also include examples on how to propose digital opportunity programs and activities will impact your life and work positively or negatively. So we all have different, the beauty of human nature and beauty of community is like, we're all together, but we all have our shared experiences, but we also have our different upbringings and backgrounds and situations. And each person, in my opinion, each person is almost like a book. You have your own story, your own uniqueness to it. And that can be provided and shared in the comment to make sure that the plan is able to cover as colorful as Texans are. So it's important that that you include everything, include your other points of views, because at the end of the day, again, when it comes to community, we all have to share a space and we'll make sure everybody is heard. So those were tips for effective comment. As mentioned earlier, um, the Broadman Development Office has created a toolkit that contains materials and action items that you can use to help get the word out. Uh, I'll mention again towards the end, but January 5th, that's the last day at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. That is the last time, date and time for you to submit a public comment. So this toolkit is here for you guys, and it also helps you to, what well, includes things that help you include things like tips for effective comments, sample invitation letters, sample social media postings and sample press releases as well as drop in articles. So you will have the slide, you have these resources we want y'all and then later on we'll have a discussion in our breakout sessions. But ultimately what we wanna get from this is that you guys feel comfortable knowing that we're trying to share and receive any resources needed for you guys to drive as much public comment as possible. So, Really emphasize one more time, January 5th, that is when the Broadband Development Office is stopping like accepting public comments. So after January 5th, there's no more public comment being submitted. But what's important is I also wanna give you guys a timeline on what comes after public comment. So following the public comment period, the BDO would develop a capacity grant program to help fund and empower aligned organizations across the state of Texas. So I'm sharing a timeline with you below, but the timeline will be revised as needed to align with the release of NTIA's um, NOFO in 2024 in mind to manage expectations regarding when grant programs will come out and when funds will start flowing. So as you see right here, the draft came out for TDOP on November 27th. January 5th, as mentioned before, is when public comment period ends. Sometime in late spring 2024 is anticipated that the final plan will be posted to the BDO website. And then that summer, that's when the BDO office will start creating and developing competitive grant programs. And that's when, that, and in the fall of 2044, that's when the grant applications will start opening. So I just want to give y'all a second to look at what the timeline looks like, um, just to kind of put in your head what it's going to look like after public comment period has ended. 
So we've talked about what public comment is, the purpose, outcomes, process associated with that. I showed you guys how to submit one. I think at this point now, we are going to start going into breakout sessions to allow us to find ways to drive public comment in the communities that you guys serve. So just to level set, when it comes to the group discussions, we wanna think about ways that resources can be shared or combined to tackle the primary barriers or making sure we submit public comment in communities in Texas. So around this sphere, there are some different questions that I'll love to talk about in the session. Uh, I wanna give y'all just a couple minutes to look at each question and write down any questions or answers that you may have. So when we go into the breakout session, we can really have a gauging conversation on what we can do in our communities to make sure we drop public comment. So as we look at these questions and as the breakout sessions are created, uh, we will start going to them shortly. Okay. Just to let you guys know the breakout rooms have been established. I will be doing the rural breakout room. So I will meet you guys there. Please feel free to make sure you look at the questions before we continue, but thank you guys so much. And I, I will see you back shortly. Hey, Jordan, can you explain to people, uh, can you provide some more digital navigation about how the breakout room process is gonna work and how people can join? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, and Dean, are you mean like just simply just actually like joining the breakout rooms? Yeah, I would explain um, how to move over to the, um, you know what, I can do it. <laughs> I'm already talking. <laughs> Excuse me, folks. The reason why I'm not uh, presenting today is because of my throat. But if you hover over the more section of your of your Zoom application, you'll see where it says breakout rooms and you'll probably see a red number. And then if the that window will pop up and if you're unassigned, you all are, you can choose urban or rural. I will be joining urban. And shortly, um, Jordan will be facilitating in rural. So take a moment to join. If you choose not to join, um, you can take a um, take a break, and we'll return shortly after this section. Thank you, Deanne. No problem. Um, does anybody who's in still in the main room need any assistance moving to a breakout? Um, just raise your hand. Everybody just more seconds. Hopefully y'all's conversation was good and engaging. Um, the role aspect of when I was in, I thought we had pretty good conversations and, and pretty good engagement of some things and some good ideas, which ultimately that's what it's all about.
Jordan is going to lead a Q&A session for the rest of the time we have together, but we really want to remind you all to visit the TDOP landing page we've created at Community Nets that we'll, you'll get a reminder email after today. Uh, if you go back to the community guide session that we had last week, there's lots of uh, positive information in there that will answer a lot of questions that came up today about submitting um, a public comment and the sections that you could be referring to with the actual chapters and the page numbers. Absolutely. Thank you, Deanne. And as Deanne mentioned, you know, each webinar is recorded and saved. So, you know, if you couldn't make it to the next one or, you know, anybody who can't make it today, just let them know this is available for them once we send it out anytime. So as Deanne mentioned, we're going to use these last couple minutes as a Q&A session for any questions anybody might have in the chat.